Hi, and good day to all of you. So we are in our new topic under the uh, lesson polyphase systems, and we have the two watt meter method. Well, two watt meter method is a topic or subtopic on power measurements. So we will discuss power measurements on a separate video. So stay stay tuned with that. So our main goal here is just to have a brief review or a recall on what are the uh, what are the formulas that we will use for the two meter methods in terms of two conditions a balance and an unbalanced condition so here uh, the formulas that we have is predetermined so the uh, the formulas that uh, you can uh, that we can uh, derive uh, will be on a uh, separate video Okay, now let us uh, uh, move forward to the uh, definition of a 2 watt meter method. Well, a 2 watt meter method is a technique that it uses on uh, power measurement if you have partial readings of voltage and current. Wherein we can uh, have the uh, readings of the watt meters if you have voltage and current on two lines. And then one line is reference. We can still uh, compute for the uh, power. When you say power here is complex power in terms of S. Wherein S can be real power plus and minus J reactive power. So in this case, uh, we will tackle the most typical type of power measurement. Which is the 2 watt meter method. Okay, now before we proceed with that, we need to uh, to uh, have a little bit of review on the wiring diagram, okay, of a two watt meter method. Well, when you say a watt meter, it has two coils, okay. So the first coil is the so-called voltage coil, and voltage coils are always connected in a parallel, okay while you have a current coil which is connected in series so it means that a watt meter has two coils the voltage and the current coil now to become power you need to have the angle wherein that is the theta that we have described on ac circuits that's the difference between the voltage and the current angles okay now in this case we have a wiring diagram and assuming that you have a free node or a common node at line C. And again, as we have mentioned, you have your Y connected source, but these are your termination points or your terminals. Okay, that points A, B, and C. Now, the watt meters are connected on A and B, having C as free node. Okay, to understand this further, I could have here the, uh, the description of the current coil where it is connected. Okay, this one here is your current coil, which is connected in series. Now, your voltage coil, hopefully you can see it on the video, this broken line, is your voltage coil connected in parallel okay now you have a common coil or a common connection we're in this two points here so what is the usage or function of that common coil if the reading is inverse for example you have here the meter and then this is your zero for example okay the typical meter is to the right for example, this is the uh, uh, meter point. However, if the meter point uh, goes at the leftmost part, okay, the reading is negative. The rightmost part, the reading is positive. So it means there is an inver uh, reverse of the, uh, of the reading. So what you will do is, to become positive, you need to inverse the coil, meaning the current coil you know, has an inverse uh, polarity so there's an inverse of the polarity that is can be plus minus or minus plus so that's the common coil and that's the function of that now we need to have the connection the current coil is in series the voltage coil is in parallel so dependent on the reference the voltage coil will go 
to the free node. And for watt meter 2, same it goes, that your current coil will be in series and your voltage coil, which is your broken line here, is in parallel, which is connected on the free or on the uh, common, uh, common node. Okay, we can establish or formulate the equations, which is very important, okay, on the next few slides. If you want to get watt meter 1 and, and you want to determine the equations, it's very easy. Depends on connection. Look, watt meter or watt meter 1 or watt meter or, or typical real power is equal to VI cosine theta for, for 1 watt meter. The connection of voltage of the voltage coil is from A to C, right? So you have here VAC. The current that is flowing at that watt meter is IA. And you have the first okay, cosine angle theta. And theta number one is dependent. Okay, I call this dependent. It depends on the angle of the voltage, which is AC. And then the angle of the current, I could say, IA. So thus, that is your equation for watt meter one. Same it goes with watt meter two. Watt meter two is connected from B to C, so your voltage coil is from B to C, and then the current is IB, and this theta angle number two. And then from there, you have the voltage BC which is dependent also on the current IB. So it means that theta, and please take note uh, rather here, because that uh, portion is, uh, is reflected. So please take note of what we are uh, uh, establishing here, that the angle is the difference between the voltage and current angle because we're talk talking about phasors. And we will need the fundamentals of phasors, which is we will uh, tackle on the, uh, on the problem solving of this topic. Okay, now you already know how to establish formulate equations. And then from there, we can derive some of the formulas. However, for the sake of discussion, again, we will limit ourselves to the predetermined formulas. If you want to have a more comprehensive discussion, as I have mentioned on the first few minutes of this video that we will have a separate uh, discussion for this for power measurements on three phase systems okay you have two conditions again you have a balance and an unbalanced condition please take note that these are the predetermined formulas and also these formulas here are only for balanced condition you cannot use this for unbalanced conditions which is we already described on the topic of all phase systems you have two types of conditions balance and unbalance okay you can get the watt meter one and watt meter two directly by having the magnitudes of the voltage and the current in terms of line values cosine 30 minus theta and then vl and il cosine 30 plus theta for w2 it can be inverse by the way but anyway in this case that angle here as i mentioned is the angle between voltage and current and by the way before we proceed a positive angle means a lagging power factor condition and a negative angle means a leading power factor condition please take note of this as well okay you can now get the total powers by just adding w1 and w2 respectively so accidentally from the pacer diagram and the derivations Yes, PT is W1 plus W2. Then QT is the square root of 3 of the uh, difference of W1 and W2. Using the triangle again, from your uh, circuits theory, you have your S, you have your P and Q, getting the tangent of, the, uh, of this angle here. You can now establish tangent theta is QT all over uh, PT. And thus... In this case, we have another important formula in determining the angle theta here. So, QT over PT is, is square root of 3, W1 minus W2, all over W1 plus W2. Or simply, getting this angle, just get the tangent 
negative 1 or inverse of the tangent of QT all over PT. Okay. I think we established all of the fundamentals here, which is very important on our problem solving. Now, we will make, uh, we will, uh, uh, we will tackle the uh, power factor conditions and the unbalanced condition for two watt meter methods. Stay tuned. Hello once again. So here we will discuss the uh, unbalanced condition. So from our previous slide, we discussed the balance condition and uh, the formulas that you will use if you have a balance for effects. However, if you have an unbalanced condition, which is the ap application of unbalanced polyphase here, we will have an algorithm. Okay, I'll use, uh, I call this an algorithm or procedure in order to solve the problem. Okay, this is the procedure for an unbalanced condition that we already used on the last uh, slide there, wherein we have a uh, wiring diagram and we formulate equation. Okay, first. We need to draw the wiring diagram. It depends on the reference node, so where you will put the watt meters. Of course, number two depends on the free node or reference node. By the way, you can put the reference node in A, B, and C, but you cannot put three watt meters for, for that without any common reference. So you can use three watt meter methods for a three phase four wire. Okay, but here, by the way, I forgot to mention this as well. In a 2 watt meter method, you can use that in a 3 phase 3 wire system. Simply because you have an A, B, and C uh, wires. Now, if that is a, a, a 3 phase 4 wire, you need to use a 3 watt meter method. Okay, now for this number 3, you need to formulate the watt meter equations that we already done from the previous slide. And then you draw the phasor diagram. Now, to understand this further, you need to go back to our lecture on uh, phase sequences to understand phasor diagrams because we will make use of that to understand the behavior, the behavior of that angle theta, which is the difference between the voltage and the current. Now, we need to determine the angles based on the uh, phasor diagram, which is, that's the main function of number four which is draw the phasor diagram. And then substitute to the watt meter equations that we have on number three. And then from there, we can solve the total power and the total reactive power. By the way, the only difference again of PT and QT is on the function. When you say cosine theta, you're considering P. When you say sine theta, you're considering qt q, q or q okay now that q is reactive which is the sine theta and p is the cosine theta now remember on our circuits sine theta is reactive factor cosine theta is power factor tangent theta is quality factor so those factors there is already described on one of the videos that you can see on the link Okay, especially on AC circuits. So again, our uh, our uh, discussion here and every solution has a story, and every story has its origin. Okay, so let us go further to power factor indicators, wherein you will have an idea already that if you have a watt meter reading that is plus or minus, they have equal, uh, they are both equal, and then uh, one of the watt meters is zero. You have an already an idea on terms of the power factor condition. If you have a power factor unity, both watt meters will read the same. Okay? If your power factor is greater than 0.5, both readings are positive. If the power factor is equal to 0.5, there is one watt meter that is null or no reading. Okay, for this case, I use uh, w2 is equal to 0. So, PT is equal to W1. And last but not the least, if the power factor is less than 0.5, 1 watt meter reading is positive, while the other is in a negative value. So, PT is W1 minus 
W2. By the way, the power factor indicators here, we're considering a balance system. Okay? Balance and unbalanced, by the way. This flexible situation. So, this is a general um, uh, general uh, or conclusion or summary of the power factor conditions for a 2 watt meter method. And thus, we already covered all of the, uh, the important aspects and concepts. Thus, we will have the application of this on our next slide or next lesson. Thank you at maraming salamat po.